Summary of Trash by Andy Mulligan Rafael Fernandez is a trash boy. He is 14 years old and lives in a makeshift home on Bihala, a huge garbage dump. He spends his days picking through trash to sell for food. Rafael works with Gardo, who is his best friend and takes care of him. People in Bihala mostly gather trash like plastic, clean paper, and rags to sell by the kilogram. People in their city don't have bathrooms, so human feces, or sup, is wrapped in paper and put in the trash. This is where most of the people who live in Bihala spend their days, digging through the trash with their feet or metal hooks they make themselves. When Rafael finds a bag, he thinks back to the day when everything changed. A 33-year-old guy named Jose Angelico worked as a servant in Green Hills, a wealthy area of town. The bag has 1,100 pesos, a map, a key marked 101, and his ID. Rafael and Gardo split the money, and Rafael takes the bag for himself. The cops came to Bihala that night, which doesn't happen very often. They were looking for the bag. Rafael's aunt tells them a lie when she says that Rafael found something when he actually found a shoe. Because Rafael and Gardo know they could get in trouble for lying, they decide to hide the bag with a boy called Rat. His real name is Jun Jun, but people sometimes call him Jun. Rat, who is about 11 years old, lives alone in a trash hole that is always wet and full of other rats. Rat is willing to hide the bag, and he knows what the key is for, it's to a locker in Central Station. The next morning, the three boys go to the station and take an envelope out of a locker. Inside is a mysterious letter written to Gabriel Ollanders at Calva Prison, along with a piece of paper that has numbers, dots, and cuts on it. The boys know they're in the middle of something big. Father Juliard, a 63-year-old man who runs the Pascal Aguila Mission School in Bihala, is putting together all the stories about the boys. Rat, Raphael, and Gardo come into Father Juliard's school one day with black feet up to their knees and a smell that fills the room. They want to use the computer to look up information for a newspaper quiz. They get through because Father Juliard lets them through and gets them some sandwiches. At that point, he doesn't know that the boys are looking up Jose Angelico. The boys leave afterward, and Juliard never sees them again. That night, the police go back to Bihala and raid Rafael's house. They arrest a scared and emotional Rafael and drag him into a room where they can question him. Detective Tired Man keeps asking Rafael about the bag while he is being choked, thrown to the ground, and hung from a window. Rafael lies and says he doesn't know anything about the bag and that he only found money in a power bill. He says he will break Rafael's bones and leave him on the train tracks, but Rafael stands by his story. The man finally gives up, and Rafael is thrown out of the station by the cops. Rafael walks home for three hours, hurt and bleeding, but living. Poor Jose Angelico, on the other hand, was killed in a cell for questioning. Rafael says that Dante Jerome, son of Gabriel Ollandres, took in Jose Angelico and 33 other street kids as his own. He was writing to Gabriel Ollandres because he had a young girl and no other living family. Along with Jose Angelico, Grace was a maid for Vice President Senator Zapanta. She quickly tells the story of how kind Jose Angelico was and how hard he worked to send his daughter Pia Dante to school, where she stayed with a local family. The next part is told by Olivia, a helper at the mission school who is 22 years old. Rat comes up to her and tells her that Gardo needs to go see his grandfather in Calva prison. Olivia doesn't want to go with Gardo, but she does. Olivia is scared, dizzy, and upset as she goes through the jail which is a stuffy warehouse full of cages full of people, some of them small children. As they make their way to the hospital area, Gabriel Ollandres, an old man who looks weak, walks toward them. Olivia finds out that Rat and Gardo lied to her to get Angelico's letter to Ollandres. Ollandres says he is locked up because of his political views. In the 1980s, Ollanders tried to show that Senator Zapanta was crooked by saying that Zapanta had spirited away $30 million in aid money that was meant for the poor. Since then, he has been in jail. Gardo asks Ollanders about the letter, 
which has the words it is accomplished and names Zapanta. This makes Allendras very happy. While Gardo is at Calva prison, Rat and Raphael use Rat's life savings to check out Zapanta's property. Rat had been saving up for a way to get home to an island called San Paolo, where he wanted to become a fisherman. When an old gardener sees the boys in the property, he tells them that Jose Angelico stole $6 million from Zapanta's secret vault and put it in an old fridge to sneak out. This makes the gardener happy because he hates Zapanta for being dishonest and greedy. When they get back to jail, Gardo reads Allendra's Angelico's letter from memory. He tells a guard named Marco that it's coded and asks for his Bible. Mark agrees to give the Bible to someone else later. That night, Allendras dies quietly in jail, and Olivia is caught. Olivia's dad gets a man from the British Embassy to help him get Olivia out of jail. As soon as Olivia is free, she flies out of the country. Olivia doesn't see the boys again, but they are still in her heart. As more police arrive in Bihala, the boys run away to the city and use the rest of Rat's money to rent a tiny room the size of a coffin. Rat loosens a ceiling plank that leads to the roof in case they need to get out quickly. Marco wants 20,000 pesos for the Bible, so Gardo goes back to the jail. When Rat wants this money, he sneaks back into Bihala and takes it from Father Juilliard's safe. He leaves a note with his name on it because that was the only word he knew how to write. Rat has been stealing money from the safe for a while, which is how he gained some savings, but he has never taken that much before. The next day, Marco and Gardo meet at a tea house to get the Bible. After the fight, Marco tries to grab Gardo and yells for help, but Gardo cuts Marco in the eye with his hook and gets away. By lighting that night, the boys try to figure out what the Bible means. Raphael believes that the ghosts of Jose Angelico and Gabriel Allendras are with them the whole night. The code is broken early in the morning, and they figure out that they need to go to the cemetery to find the brightest light, which Angelico talked about in his message. Rat hears a noise outside at that very moment. Rat acts quickly and takes the boys out of the building through the ceiling plank and across the roofs to a building full of street kids. Rat's quick thinking keeps the boys alive while the cops are after them. During their runoff with the street kids, the boys get lost from the cops. The gravestone carver Federico Gons speaks up and says that he felt very sad when Jose Angelico asked him to make a stone with the words it is accomplished on it for his little daughter. Some newspaper stories say that the search for Zapanta's lost wealth and the cases of people who think there was wrongdoing at Zapanta's bankrupt company feed us, go on. Some stories say that Zapanta is crooked because he has so much money in his vault, and some even call for a revolution to get rid of him. The graveyard is full of people because it's Day of the Dead and everyone in the city has come to eat and drink with their dead relatives. The boys look for Angelico's family grave for hours and finally pay a guard to tell them where it is. When they can't find it, Gardo climbs on top of a marble angel and sees that on the other side of the graveyard, where the poor people are buried, thousands of lights are burned brightly. The boys realize they've been looking in the wrong place, so they cross to the other side, where people live in shanties next to graves that have been dug up. That's where they find the Angelico plot, where the bodies of Jose Angelico's wife and son are stacked high above the ground. The boys are very sad because there is a grave for his daughter Pia Dante on top. A little girl asks them what they're doing as they look around the graves for clues. Raphael goes white as a sheet when she says her name is Pia Dante. He thinks Pia is a ghost. It turns out that Pia's foster family left her at the graveyard when Angelico didn't show up, where they had taken her to meet her father. Street kids from the graveyard shanties fed Pia bits of food to keep her alive. The boys get Pia some food because she looks really weak. She gets a fever while she eats, but Rat saves her life by mashing up a banana and giving it to her slowly. After putting Pia to rest in the back of a shack, they go back to the grave and find that her box is full of cash. Raphael thinks the money looks like food and drink, a fresh start, and getting away from the smell. The boys know they can't keep everything because it's not theirs. 
They also know that they can't take the money to a bank or government official because it would be taken away and given back to Zapanta. Rat gets an idea, they should throw it in Bahala so the other trash kids can find it. The boys and Pia sneak back into Bahala with some money in sacks in the middle of the night. Rat starts by going to the mission school and putting money in Father Juilliard's safe. He also leaves a card with his name written on it. Rat goes through the cabinets and finds some used backpacks and school outfits that have been given. Rat, Gardo, Raphael, and Pia fill four bags with cash and throw the rest into the rising typhoon wind. The wind whips up the cash and spreads it out all over the dump. They also find another letter from Jose Angelico. Rat wants to stay and watch the trash kids look for plastic and turn it over for $100 bills. In the last story, which is told by Raphael, Gardo, Rat, and Pia as a whole, the four of them sneak onto a train wearing the given school uniforms to look like other kids. The train ride to San Paolo takes nine hours. They now know how to fish and have bought fishing boats. They plan to spend the rest of their lives on the beach, where they will be happy and clean. In the second letter that Jose Angelico sent, which is included as an appendix, he carefully planned how he would steal Zapanta's money after Allenders went to jail. He begs the person who finds the money to remember that the poor own it and should give it back to them. About the author Andy Mulligan was born and raised in South London. After graduating from college in the UK, he worked as a theatre director and his big dream was to run the Royal Shakespeare Company. But Britain's economic slump under Margaret Thatcher put Mulligan out of work in the 1980s. This led to a trip that changed her life to Calcutta, India, to help a friend fix up an orphanage. When Mulligan saw how poor people lived in India, it made him think about what he wanted to do with his life. He went back to Britain to retrain as a teacher and then taught in Cornwall, England, Vietnam, Brazil, and the Philippines. Mulligan got the idea for trash from seeing kids living on a garbage dump in the Philippines. He wrote it while working as a teacher in Manila, but he used stories and characters from other books he had written about poor communities in other countries. Mulligan's first book for young adults, Ribblestrop, came out in 2009. But it was trash, which came out in 2010, that made him famous as a writer around the world, even though it caused a lot of debate because it was violent and had bad language. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.